OK, let's talk about these questions. Question one, very popular question. Everybody wants to talk about this one. How would you describe the film's color and camera work? Why are they like that? So I was listening to some groups. Uh, some of you mentioned that the color is mostly warm colors, yellow, orange, sometimes a little red. Uh, in the nighttime, it's slightly darker. In the daytime, it's slightly brighter, but the color is basically very similar. Why? Why does the film like to use these kinds of colors? As I said, they're warm colors, but they're also very specifically indoor colors. If you go out into the day, it's either very bright and clear or it's very uh, gray. You don't see that kind of warm orange color outdoors. It's always an indoor lighting. And in fact, if you've been to New York and you've been to a New York bar, most New York bars are that color. So it's the color of an indoor bar, indoor restaurant. The entire film is that color. What happens in this film in a bar? The early important scene in the bar full of men playing pool and uh, messing around with women, and then the main character goes to the basement and sees something she's not supposed to see. What else happens in a bar? She goes on a date or quote unquote date with the police officer which turns into nothing, and then she gets mugged on the street. So I think by uh, linking the those colors and uh, through the entire film, the film is hinting that the main character's entire world is that kind of feeling, full of uh, not entirely safe feelings even when she's at home, right? Uh, men are able to enter her home without her permission. In her sister's home, the right, the floor right below is strip dancing. Um, and then of course her sister gets killed at home. So I think the, the use of the color is to, even though it's a warm color, I think it's there to dislodge our sense of the main character's safety. There really is no place where she's entirely safe. Ironically, the one scene where the color is very different is the climax at the lighthouse, because that is outdoors. Um, and I think that irony also ties into who the bad guy ultimately is. It's the, as one of your classmates mentioned, it's the one man that the film does not make suspicious. So in the same way, the one place where the color does not feel dangerous is the place of real danger. What about the camera work? Uh, as some classmates pointed out, the camera is always moving. I don't think there's a single shot where the camera sits still. Um, how does that make us feel? Does it make us feel safe or worried? Are we observing the action or are we part of the action? When the camera moves, that tells us that somebody is holding the camera. Which tells us it makes us feel like we are in that space with these people. So um, whenever something happens to the main character, when she starts feeling danger or feeling disgust, these kinds of emotions, we also feel that with her because we are in the room with her thanks to the camera. And that's also why the images are often blurry, unclear, blocked by things in front. Uh, because in, in real life, we don't often get a clear picture of everything at the same time. We're always focusing on one thing or another. We're always not quite exactly sure of what's going on in every space around us. 
Um, and so I think the camera work is trying to give us that sense. We're in the room with her. Uh, we're not always in a, the best position to get a clear view of everything. It feels more natural. It feels more engaged and involved. As for the blurriness, if you notice some shots, the middle is in focus, but the edges are blurry. Or sometimes the main character enters focus and then leaves focus, uh, becomes clear and then becomes blurry again. Uh, that's also a kind of naturalism, but also it's a kind of um, confusion. Kind of like maybe you had two beers and you're not exactly very uh, observant of everything. You, it gives you the feeling that maybe you're missing some information. You want to see more. You want to, to know more. Which I think is also the mindset of the main character. Uh, some of you mentioned that she meets a lot of terrible men. But if all of the men in her life are terrible, the, then the problem isn't just finding a better man. The problem is being able to tell who are the real bad men and who are not. Um, we'll get back to this in question three, but the sense of a blurry image also adds to the sense of confusion about who is a good guy, who is a bad guy. Question two, nobody chose this. Oh, I guess one group chose this question. Uh, was it group three? Right. So, okay, so use of sound and music. What do you guys think? Let's go one by one. Let's just start with music. Right, the music is often slow and romantic. Violins, right? Um, when? When does it use this kind of music? Uh, when they're flirting with each other. OK. Um, could be. My strong, more stronger impression is that the romantic music really kicks in during the sex scenes. A lot of the flirting scenes are also kind of confusing precisely because often there's no music. So we don't know if the men are dangerous or they're just flirting. Um, but it's only when uh, we get into the really long sex scene, the music comes in and tells us this is something that the main character feels like is a good thing. She doesn't uh, suspect in that moment. She's not thinking about, will this guy hurt me? Will this guy kill me? She's really lost in that moment. But also uh, the other place the film uses music is near the end. Right when she finally sees that this is the bad guy, the music also enters, partly because he turns on the music. But when the bad guy turns on the music, that is also something that the director has him do. So that's also a filmmaking choice. In the movie, he turns on the music to like, I guess, be romantic or something to try to quiet her and make sure she's not too scared, doesn't try to run away, but the film uses music there. If we think of the film's use of music in the sex scenes as a kind of certainty or as a kind of sense of safety, then in the climax, it's also a kind of certainty. She is certain that he's the bad guy. She no longer has to worry about every man in her life. But of course, in that moment, it's not safety. It's an ironic use of the music. It's complete danger. What about the sound effects, background sounds? Do you have thoughts about that? Is the film quiet or noisy? It's it's not like loud with like explosions and fighting, right? But every scene has background sounds that um, force you to notice them. Every scene, there's like people in the back talking a little bit too loudly. There's music that's a little bit too loud. There's traffic. You're never able to ignore the background noise. 
Um, and I think that's also a, a symbol of the main character's anxiety about like the people in her life, especially the men. Which brings us to question three. Sorry, we have to move a little quickly. I want to get you out by 340. Um, portrayal of men, portrayal of women, how do they view each other? Nobody took this question, so it's by question. Um, as we mentioned, most of as as you guys mentioned, most of the men in the main character's life are not very good men. Um, so even when she meets a new man, like the um, first time she meets the cop, Malloy, right? He enters her apartment building. He asks her, "Can I come in?" He shows her his badge. Her first reaction is, "Is that badge real?" Uh, so even when she meets a new man, um, she also has to like be very careful. And like if you remember the scenes uh, on the street, like in the car and she's looking on the street and she's passing people by, uh, the men are often, the men that she sees for like one second, two seconds are often like uh, arguing or they're flirting with women or like they're doing something that seems a little aggressive. Whereas the women that she sees on the street, I remember one very clearly. Uh, the first time Malloy asks her to get in his car and they're driving her to the police station, she's looking outside the car. And at one intersection, she sees a woman in a red dress running. Uh, if it's any, if it's just like a woman in like uh, exercise clothes running, we might think, okay, like she's she's ex she's jogging, but she's wearing a red dress, and that immediately tells us something is wrong. If you're wearing a dress and you're running, something is wrong. But we don't see anyone chasing her, so it's not exactly clear that something bad is happening to her. Maybe she's running to an emergency. Maybe she's late. We don't know. But it's a very unusual scene, uh, unusual image. And if we think of the rest of the women in the film, either they're being messed around with by men, they are strip dancers, they get killed, uh, or they, like the main character and her sister, they constantly talk about men and sex and uh, the, like the future in terms of family. I don't think any women talk about their jobs or anything unrelated to men or sex. I may have missed something, but I think that's true. Um, so if you put these two together, right? Men as aggressive and dangerous, women as uh, focused on either like doing something to help others, including men or focused on men. If you put these two together, the world of the film seems to be quite um, patriarchal, quite uh, male oriented. It seems to be a world that cares more about men than about women. Uh, and so how do they view each other? The men are often saying, oh, you women are blah, blah, blah. You women all blah, blah, blah. And the women often think, well, he's not going to kill me. I mean, you know, they sometimes make jokes. Uh, they sometimes think about uh, like um, the the medical student, right, who keeps harassing the main character. Um, he obviously seems kind of scary, but uh, Franny and her sister treat him as just another guy. Um, so if in, if in this story world, the men are all like that, then it's not a surprise that women would uh, use this kind of viewpoint to look at the men. Question four. Also, nobody chose this question. I wonder why. Uh, so the two sex scenes, the first one, she sees uh, a man getting oral sex in the basement. If we think about that scene, uh, the man is holding the woman's hair. He's entirely in control. And we know that most women, the vast majority of women, do not get ple physical pleasure from giving oral sex. So in that scene, it is only the man who benefits. But in the second sex scene, the one between the two main characters that goes for very long, uh, it is now the man who is giving oral sex to the woman. Uh, and 
even though in this scene, the man is still taking the lead, he's still in control, but he's using that control to give pleasure and benefit to the woman. Whether it's uh, doing things or talking about things, telling stories, uh, he's giving her pleasure, but he's still in control. Uh, and it, we can look at this as saying that in this world, whether women uh, benefit or not seems to be at the under the control of men. Men get to decide. And then question five, uh, the final scene, some uh, classmates said that it seems kind of romantic, which is true. Uh, she's wearing a dress. She lies down in his arms. He's now a good guy, we know. So it's romantic, but it's also very weird, right? He's still in handcuffs. The floor is covered in urine. Miao Yi. Um, so why would the film want this to be the final scene? So on the one hand, yes, she now can trust him. She has found a good man. And yet, in order to trust him, the man still has to be in handcuffs. In order to truly let herself lie in his arms, she can't let him uh, take control of the situation. In fact, it's the only scene where the woman is entirely in control is the last two, uh, the last sex scene where she's wearing the red dress and this final scene. Only these two scenes is a woman entirely in control. Um, so in conclusion, this film looks like it's a crime thriller, but really I think it's trying to show a, a, a woman's view of New York City in, it, this was 2003, when she feels unsafe uh, due to the culture of men around her, this is what it might feel like. And it's one of the few examples of the perspective of a woman in this kind of environment. The director, Jane Campion, is actually better known for art films. Uh, whenever she makes a movie, there's always a good reason. Questions? Okay, see you next week.